I'm going to tell you a story about a guy named Dwayne. Dwayne was a pastor in Texas and called by God and a great Bible teacher and a Bible preacher. And there was one weekend he got sick and he caught a flu. Like sometimes we catch a little, just an average flu, flu virus. Well, he got up to preach that morning and as he did every week and he preached the first service. They had two services on Sunday morning and he wasn't feeling that great. His voice was a little bit kind of feeling rough, but he preached and then he went ahead and preached the second service and was feeling a little bit worse. They had an evening service that night, and he told the, the leaders, he said, I, just, I can't preach tonight. I'm just, my voice is just gone, and I don't, I don't know what's going on. And well, what ended up happening was he, this flu virus attacked his vocal cords. It was a very unusual thing. The doctors couldn't even quite figure it out. It, it, it damaged the nerve tissue of his vocal cords beyond repair. Over the next three years, he went to 63 specialists and their teams, over 200 doctors, as they tried to diagnose him and treat him. His voice, he said, it felt like the worst case of laryngitis. He said, it felt like somebody choking you, like just pressing up against your vocal cords, like this pre nonstop pressure against your throat. A year after he was experienced this flu virus, he had to step down from his church. And that's what he felt called to do. I mean, as you know, as a pastor, our voice is kind of important, right? I only do two or three things, and one of which is preach. And I cast vision, and I lead. I preach, lead, and cast vision as the shepherd. And you need a voice. It helps. He didn't have a voice. So after a year, on his own willingness, he said, I, 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 this church needs to find a new pastor. I just, I, I don't know what's going on. He was devastated. His family moved down to Houston. His wife got a job because it, it took him a while to figure out what to do. His whole life, he'd been trained for ministry and prepared for ministry. And, and now he, he can't do that. Doesn't even have a voice. Can't even talk. He did eventually find a job, but just went through some struggles, depression, discouragement. You can imagine. Pastors are human just like you. Yeah. Finally, they, they got, became a part of this large church in Houston, Texas, a large Baptist church. And there was one Sunday that the, the Sunday school teacher, the Bible study teacher, wasn't able to go because he was sick. He wasn't able to teach. So they, they asked Dwayne, of course, they, they knew that he was discouraged and maybe thought maybe they could... You know, it would be encouragement to have him teach. And so they asked him to be the substitute teacher. And he's like, I, I, can't, I can't teach. I mean, the, the, you, don't, you don't want to listen to this voice. And so they hooked him up with this microphone, this special microphone, where, where they could, you could just barely hear what he was saying and, and understand it just a little bit. And that Sunday, as he was teaching in a Southern Baptist church, in Houston, Texas. It was the only Bible study class on the in the entire church that actually would, would audio tape the lesson because with, with it being a large class of over 150 people, there might be one or two that weren't there, so they would, make, they would tape it and then give it to people who were, who were absent or who weren't there. Have two or three tapes laying on the table each week for people who maybe missed the previous week. So they record it. It just so happened that the lesson that was lined up, this curriculum that was lined up, even by the denomination, it came on Psalm 103. He begins to teach. And of course, he, he's trying to explain the fact that, that God doesn't heal all the time. Of course, here he is with this voice. And so he's, he's saying, you know, God forgives all our sins, but he doesn't always heal our diseases. And I want you to listen to this audio tape, Pastor Dwayne Miller. So when the psalmist writes, and he heals all of my diseases, let me say to you that I believe God still heals. That hasn't ended. That is not over. Now you have to be careful on how you do this. Because there are folks who carry things to an excess, and it becomes a show. And God has never intended that that be what it is. God heals in his sovereign will. 
I don't know why God does things that he does, but I know that he does. And the only thing he requires of me is to allow him to be God and me to be me and let it be. To say that every single person will always be healed because Jesus died on the cross is a misinterpretation of scripture. Not true. Won't work. Isaiah 53 doesn't talk about physical healing. I'm sorry. That's just not the context. And to impress that there causes a misinterpretation of scripture. That's wrong. On the other hand, to say that, since we don't have anything after the book of Acts, that miracles ended at the book of Acts and they never happen again, is equally as wrong. Because you have put God in a box both ways. And he doesn't want to be in the box. So, the psalmist says, I'm excited, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. One of his benefits is he heals all of my diseases. And then in verse 4 he says, and he redeems my life from the pit. Now, I like that verse just a whole lot. I have had, and you have had in times past, pit experiences. We've both had, we've all had times when our life seemed to be in a pit, in a grave. And we didn't have an answer for the pit we find ourselves in. And I don't understand this right now. I'm but overwhelmed at the moment I'm not quite sure what to say or do <laughs> I'm uh, Sounds funny to say at a loss for words. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I He redeems my life from the pit. <laughs> and crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my desires with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is slow to anger. The Lord is abounding in love. The Lord will not accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, that's mercy. Or repay us according to our iniquities, that's mercy. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us.